if you may have watched my earlier videos, you know how most of my computers are far from capable of running local LLMs. In this video, I'll walk you through how I solved that problem using eWaste. Instead of having a performant GPU in all of my machines, I was looking for a more cost effective and power efficient solution. Maybe an always on Linux server that could host local LLMs over the network that my other lesser capable computers can connect to as needed. I wasn't going to keep the ThinkPad T15G Gen 2 running all day and night. And the Dell Precision T3600 is a little too power hungry. I had a lot of e-waste at home and I thought creating something out of that would be interesting. I mentioned in one of my earlier videos about this collection of desktop computers I've been holding on to for almost a year now. Looking at only the small form factor machines, there were three models among the 13 units. The newest model was an HP LE Desk 800 Gen 1. Then I had three HP Compaq 8300 Elite. The rest nine were HP Compaq 8200 Elite. I would have chosen the newest one out of the bunch for this project, but it failed to accept the components I had lying around along with the GPU that I'll soon talk about. The 8200 Elite was a generation older, but something in between was the 8300 with similar hardware as the Elite Desk 800. And that is what I chose. I had three of them, so I thought if this could work, and given how old these machines are, I could deploy one and keep the other two around for spares, just in case it happens to fail. I had to clean it inside out and replace the CPU thermal paste to make things ready for the build. I had a bunch of DDR3 RAM modules lying around, many extracted from the machines I just mentioned. And I used these two pair of matching 4GB modules to make a total of 16GB. This isn't the maximum for this machine, but given that 4GB was the max I had per module, I decided to settle for that for the time being. I used a 2.5 inch SATA drive bracket along with this 512GB SATA 3 SSD I had lying around. This one's running at 77% remaining health, so it was almost a throwaway anyway. I used these screws that came with the original mechanical hard drive on the system, finally dropping it in the storage bay. I did not want to play around with an Ethernet cable while also limiting the choices of where I'd place this machine in the house. So I added this PCIe Express adapter to add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to the system. It's a fairly straightforward and cost-effective mod as well. Now comes the main element of the build, the GPU. The Quadro P1000 that I added to the ThinkStation P340 a while ago started to show signs of failure with random artifacts on the screen. So I took it out of the system. I learned that even though this GPU isn't suited to be used to drive a display, it can still be potentially used for other non-graphical GPU intensive tasks like running a local LLM. Along with the Quadro P1000, I also carried the small form factor bracket and this mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable. Once the build was ready, I used this magical USB drive that helps me turn adopted computers into my own. I installed Void Linux and set it up identically to the other machines in my fleet. I installed Olama and pulled Llama 3 to begin with. I wasn't planning to interact with this machine over an SSH shell. So I exposed the service over the home network so that I could connect to it from the rest of my machines. As a demo, look how my X1 Nano can use it from over the air without stressing over its Intel Iris Xe GPU. I've written a couple of scripts that work with this project named Fabric and together both take care of most of the heavy lifting for me while I can ask a question to a local LLM and get the results in the way I like. Now this isn't the most capable AI server out there. However, the performance on this 12 year old machine with this relatively recent GPU is great and it all seemed to fit in place together. I mean the GTX 1060 on my Dell Precision T3600 and the RTX 3080 on my ThinkPad T15G Gen 2 would both go circles around the setup, but for this price and more so utilizing what would otherwise be considered e-waste, this was looking great. 
Counting only the SSD bracket and wireless adapter, the material cost of this project is merely $15.26. If I would add the 512GB SSD at 77% health, which I'd find hard convincing myself over using in a machine I depend on, and also including the original cost of the Cordro P1000 that is failing to work, along with the small form factor bracket and the mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable, Mathematically, the overall cost does come out to be $129.53. This is almost half of what would get you a Mac Mini with an M1 chip. And though the performance and power efficiency are not even remotely comparable, I'm happy to have been able to reuse junk and as they say, maybe save the planet. You may be wondering, I did not count the keyboard, mouse and the display in the cost. Well, firstly, I received these at no cost as well. And then none of these will be eventually considered a part of the system. It would mostly be sitting in a corner of the house, needing only a power outlet and reasonable Wi-Fi network reception, similar to my Think Center tiny server. Speaking of which, this machine being old isn't power efficient enough to be running 24 seven with higher idle power draw numbers. I wish the Think Center M715Q Tiny could have had a little more GPU horsepower and I'd have preferred that over this one any day. I could also have gone with a Mac Mini with an Apple Silicon chip, but neither was I looking to spend money on something like that, nor would it have been any fun. I'm happy with the setup for now and I may come up with ways to optimize power consumption on this machine, maybe scheduling downtime at night when I won't be needing it. So at the end of the day, is this the best machine for the job? No. But then how much did I have to spend on it? Not so much. And I guess the lead just makes it all worth the time and effort. I still have to find a way to expose this AI server out of my home network. So my machines would be able to talk to it when I'm on the move and not connected to the home network.